Welcome everybody to the NIC3D AMA um, in celebration of this year's 3D printed Toys for Tots campaign and specifically highlighting uh, the hub managers that have helped us out so much today. Um, our founder and president, Michael Cow, is going to be answering some questions you guys put up on the Discord. Um, I'll be reading those questions to him and uh, hopefully we can get everything in the amount of time we have. So uh, Michael, do you want to start out, uh, talk a little bit about the company? Our first question is a basic, you know, how do we get here kind of question, so. Yeah, hey everyone, Michael Cow. Uh, First off, I really appreciate everyone being a part of this, our annual philanthropy. Um, what started off as just a, a very quick, uh, hey, what if we just use idle machine time to, to do this thing to, you know, for charity, just really uh, blew up and, you know, this, this fourth annual, the numbers are just, just unbelievable. Um, how many people have volunteered and how much, uh, you know, materials, have been consumed, how many toys have been pre uh, uh, printed. Um, I think you all know the numbers. It's it's uh, 150 to 15,000 to 18,000 and now over 56,000, I think. It's just, it, it really is mind blowing. Um, that not only is it, you know, for us, uh, there are uh, kind of the, the three um, purposes of, of this philanthropy. Of course, one is, um, you know, giving, giving back to kids, uh, giving, giving uh, something to children in need. Um, but it's all also about experimenting with distributed manufacturing, um, which is, uh, you know, really only additive manufacturing, 3D printing um, can really exemplify uh, for whatever the purpose is. Um, and I, I think the past couple of years have really shown the, the purpose of it or the possibilities, I should say, possibilities of it, you know, with um, all the uh, with obviously the health crisis uh, started last year and um, so, uh, supply chain issues. And of course, um, the issues that the supply chain has had for um, many years now, uh, which are which include um, the, the cost of labor, the shortage of uh, skilled labor, um, rising overseas costs, um, logistics issues, and uh, things like that. So it's, it's just a, it's a really, really cool um, experiment. Uh, and, and the possibilities seem kind of endless. Uh, I, I guess the other purpose is to show, show the world uh, that 3D printing additive manufacturing is um, is more useful uh, than just making little trinkets and, and prototypes. Even though this is this is toys, but it's it is trying to inspire uh, kids and just people in general to uh, be more curious about manufacturing. Right? And and if when they see and they pick up and they feel a 3D printed toy, we really hope that. Um, these kids will just be inspired to wonder how it's made. And I, I just believe that, we just believe that the more curiosity there is in manufacturing, the better off uh, everything is, um, especially for our, our country. So thanks thanks for being a part of uh, the the network and, and volunteering to be an ELF hub, uh, which, is, which is a lot of effort. And this is just really exciting. Yeah, it's really exciting. And uh, I mean, we've come so far specifically with uh, Toys for Tots, but Michael, can you talk a little bit about how you got started in 3D printing yourself? Yeah, so I finished school in 2003 uh, as a mechanical engineer. And then I uh, joined Honda R&D, designing automotive, uh, mainly interiors. And Honda, this is 2003, Honda had just gotten their first couple 3D printers. And I was a young engineer designing little plastic parts. 
And then my boss said, hey, go downstairs and get these, get your thing, you can get your thing prototyped. And so that was my first exposure. Um, and, you know, obviously immediately fell in love with the process and the technology and uh, the possibilities. And so from 2003 until um, 2011, I was a, just a user or, you know, I was just a customer of 3D printing, got parts made. And then, and then in 2011, I jumped on the, the bandwagon of, of uh, 3D printer kits, um, got a few of my own and just became a hobbyist uh, tinker in my basement. And then in 2012, um, I got pretty involved with the RepRap uh, printers and then started um, making mods, you know, designing my own variation and selling them uh, to local uh, schools and nonprofits and sold a few on eBay. And then uh, I remember going through a lot of materials and a lot of quality issues with materials, um, even US made stuff. That was basically rebranded plastic welding rod and weed whacker line. And I had experience in injection molding. Uh, at least I'd been to a lot of facilities uh, working uh, through Honda. And I, I kind of said, how hard could this be? And uh, it turned out to be a lot harder than I thought, but we have been mating filament uh, since 2013 and have just continually tried to improve quality and uh, we're excited about some new materials that we're, we're experimenting with. And then in 2016, um, right before I made the transition, uh, I left the corporate world to do IC3D full time. Um, we, we decided to do 3D printing as a service because local uh, engineers and designers were asking us if we could do that for them. And so that, that was the start of our printing service. So it's been going on about five and a half years. And then uh, at around the same time as we started that, um, we uh, decided that it was gonna be too difficult to build a, a 3D printing service with the two ends of the spectrum in terms of equipment at the time. On the one end, you have um, hobby level, kind of low, low cost desktops. On the other end, you have the kind of more of the industrial machines like Stratasys and 3D systems, uh, which were really expensive. So um, it was just really difficult to commit to that kind of uh, cost model. And so we decided to start um, basically scaling up like the basic architecture of desktop printers and started making our own medium size and large size uh, printers. So over the past five, five, five and a half years, we've developed machine, uh, those larger machines in house, uh, but they have been for internal use as we try to make improvements and work out a lot of kinks and um, make them more repeatable and reliable. So this is, this is the first year uh, that we thought we felt comfortable enough to release our own uh, medium sized printer, which is the Virago 700. Uh, maybe some of you have seen. So uh, build volume is a little over two foot cubed, and we're about to. We just kicked off the des um, engineering for the next version of our four foot size machines, um, which we'll hope to have early next year. So that's how that's how we got started to where we are now. So from your own desktops to materials, print service. Uh, and now back around to make your own hardware. Uh, this is an explain like your five question. What did you learn about starting a small business in 3D printing? Um, that, uh, you know, nothing is really figured out uh, in terms of 3D printing as a business. There are a lot of, uh, there are a lot of other companies doing, doing their own thing. But I'd say there's no blueprint or model to go off of, uh, which is it's it's good and bad. Uh, it gives you a lot of creative freedom, but sometimes you are just uh, you're just left kind of wondering if it's the best decision uh, that you've made, right? Because if you there are many other businesses if, that you want to start, whether it's a, an injection molding company or even a product development firm or a, a dry cleaner, let's say. I mean, there those those exist. Those are fairly mature, and so you can 
you can look at those and you can get consultants in those areas to help figure it out. But when you're trying to build, um, like for us, you know, in a nutshell, one of the things that we're trying to build is a, a gigantic vending machine, right? Full, full of 3D printers of all different sizes That's um, that you can feed lots of different things through. Well, that doesn't, that doesn't really exist at a mature level in the world. So there's just a lot of figuring out. Yeah, and continuing with that, another explain like I'm five question. Uh, what what have you come across that was most surprising um, running a 3D printing company? I think the most surprising thing is uh, really really the applications and the, and the possibilities. You know, are so are so abundant. Um, the the hardest part. I've, I've been told by, I'll say, su successful business people that one, one of the most important things to do as a business is say no, right? You have to really identify what is what you want to focus on and really say no to things that are really distractions, right? That, that, aren't, that aren't core to what you're trying to do. But when the possibilities are seem endless, um, that, that is a, that's difficult. There's a lot of things to say no to. You know, uh, somebody comes up and says, "Hey, can we? Should we print this?" Hey, and then another customer is like, "Hey, can we? Can we? Can we print this?" And maybe we should go in this direction. Maybe we should go in that direction, right? And you know, a lot of a lot of those suggestions sound really good, right? And any number of them are fine, right? As if you focus on that thing, it'll be it could be a, a successful, sustainable business. But again. Um, you can only say yes to so many things and focus on so many things to be a sustainable company, I think. Well, uh, I think saying no might be one of them, but what has been the key to IC3D success and what are the guiding principles for the future? Um, I think there are a lot of keys. Uh, the, the one thing I can think, the, the thing that comes to the top of mind is about uh, people, uh, our team, because I don't want to sound like sound cheesy, but it's true. Um, it's and not because you know several of our staff are listening in right now, but the, we we focus heavily on culture, like the work environment, the people, um, meaning that we we have added people on our team who are who care about other people you know just on a basic level they care about um doing the best to their personal potential uh, which is important they are not um it's not just about themselves or, or what they gain personally um you know passive aggressiveness is not here uh so what that also does is you end up with you end up with a team who is that is extremely um, open-minded and just care about what the what the the entire organization is doing, and so I think I think with that um, it's just a, a key factor in solving helping a customer solve a problem, helping build the system, uh, helping. Um, a customer with an issue or to just to help to resolve a problem. So I think, I think fundamentally uh, building a solid team is the most, is the most important thing. Well, I got to agree with that. Um, <laughs> the next question is a little more closely related to the Toys for Tots campaign. Uh, will IC3D consider building on the success of distributed manufacturing efforts like PPE and Toys for Tots? And, a, and support a commercialized solution. Right. So I think um, it, at first it's going to be indirect and then later possibly direct. And what I mean by that is um, one of the biggest challenges is quality control. Maybe, maybe the biggest, maybe the biggest challenge is quality control, right? There's so many things out of your out of uh, our control, out of our hands, um, even on a sort of a, a, a simple thing 
as uh, the toys that we produce, right? Um, the articulating ones, the ones with extra uh, separate printed wheels that you snap on, right? So when when you're when you think about the, the system of distributed manufacturing for more critical components, um, I think that's when you run into to, to challenges. However, when I say indirect, um, indirect to me means that you're still building a system to to prove out a lot of things. And I think you're still using that to show the world the possibilities, right? Um, you know, when you can say that you, you we've collectively created uh, over 55,000 toys, but they were done on, you know, hundreds of machines, uh, idle time, donated time. Um, and then, you know, and then those toys were distributed locally uh, and most of it didn't go through one facility, for example. It's just, it really, I think it really just, just, show, just plants a seed um, in, in a lot of minds of individuals, business owners, the government, right? To, to then maybe fund uh, more, like a, a bigger efforts. Um, and I think we'll, we'll, I think eventually we'll solve all those, all those quality issues. But um, yeah, that's my response. Uh, this year's TFT program is, you know, so much bigger than last year's and the year before that and the year before that. Uh, what do you envision for the future of the program? So I don't, I really try not to put, um, necessarily put metrics on this program. I, I really singularly care about one thing for this program. And that is sustainability um, because I, I don't, you know, that's kind of true for anything, any organization um, project. If it's not sustainable, like if it can't go on forever by itself, um, then it's not going to, it's not going to succeed. Right. Like at first we just wanted to get this uh, kicked off and we, we, the first two years uh, we didn't, ask for any monetary donations um, to offset the materials cost. You know, we used our own team's efforts and, and labor um, to uh, administer the program, to do all the QC and everything. So it was a it was a, a pure donation from, from us, but it's, you know, it's tough. We're a small business, you know, you can only go so far. You know, 1,500 toys is one thing, but 55,000 toys is a, a whole nother thing, right? So, and it's not, it's not sustainable if it's just us. I mean, we, we'd, we'd go out of business, right? <laughs> and then the program would maybe, maybe uh, die. So this, that's why this year, um, you know, beginning with the creation of Elf Hubs, right? Like having, having you all uh, support with those efforts um, is a humongous deal for sustainability. Um, us working with, you know, uh, materials companies to, uh, donate raw materials to help offset offset that cost is a big deal. Um, but we still have packaging, we still have some administration, we still have logistics. So we have been, that's why this year we um, decided to create a nonprofit to be able to take donations and, and give write-offs to other companies um, to help offset uh, costs for the program. Yeah, to, to at least uh, kind of break even like breaking even is, you know is the goal to again it's all about sustainability but so so whether next year is you know only sixty five thousand or one hundred fifteen thousand, either way it's 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 fine right but that's that's my point of view okay so uh a been given a warning how many how many minutes five minutes just a couple minutes okay yeah so uh if anyone wants to go, go off mute and ask a question real quick or just uh, make a statement uh we can use the rest of the time for that thank you everyone for coming i guess i had a question my name is jeff i was the seattle washington hub this year and I want to know what uh, 
What things do you think uh, could be done better for next year? Like, were there friction points you guys noticed? From my perspective, everything has been going, seems to be going pretty smoothly. Any major issues? So, uh, if, if someone else wants to jump in to talk about a problem I, I haven't heard, but I mean, really things, things look to be pretty good because we've, there are friction points in the past that I think we have definitely worked out, uh, including communication with the Marine Corps Reserve, communication with uh, related to toy designs, um, getting those th getting uh, those approved also. Um, uh, again, quality control and just the number of people. A lot of that has, has been addressed. So um, I think we have a really good platform. Um, if I... Uh... Do you have a forum for like some feedback um, or is there a, like what's the best way just email? <laughs> I'll uh, unmute to answer that real quick. So obviously there's the discord server where yeah, I would say 100% um, what this year um, it, it did take us a while to get the, the nonprofit um, stood up because we didn't know the process. Right. So we had to we had to figure that out, work with our attorney and all that stuff. Um, to make everything official. Uh, so I think it, it did get started started later um, than we wanted to, but we have that now. So we can, I don't see why we couldn't. Cause yeah, in years past people, you know, there are companies and individuals who were asking us to how they could help. And, you know, they didn't have a printer. Um, they just wanted to contribute and we couldn't, well, not that we couldn't, but we couldn't give them a, like a, receipt or whatever right like a write-off kind of thing some people didn't care but you know larger larger companies you know uh their policies they only they could donate to nonprofits, and that was fine and so that really pushed us to, to you know do this well I, and my biggest question on that was because in the summertime i go to my farmer's market and i sell my 3d stuff there and i do uh craft stuff and it's when it when I forgot my first email, I'd put out that I was starting to do this, and we were, and I was going to, I was, everybody's like, well, is there a way that I can contribute? And I'm like, well, not yet. <laughs> so that's like now I want something that says yes, we yeah. can be able to do that. Definitely, that makes sense. Thanks for saying that. Nobody else has any questions. I'll ask this. This may be a stupid question. It may be answered somewhere, but. What does IC and IC3D stand for? Good question. It is not written anywhere, kind of intentionally. But uh, when I when I was brainstorming this with a few former colleagues nine, uh, nine, years. nine, nine years ago, um, it was it actually became two things. Like one was literally seeing something in 3D, like I see. 3D because I would I would design stuff. I've been catting for a long time. I would design stuff, then go home and uh, well, I would CAD that and then I would print that and like you all get that in my hand that evening, right? And so you're literally seeing something in person in 3D. So it made sense that way. And then uh, the using the letters, it was imagination and creation in 3D, which just seemed to fit really well. Um, kind of the same theme. You're imagining it create it in multiple ways and, and then you see it. And what's your favorite 3D print right now? Oh, the print. My favorite print? My favorite print. Um, that is difficult. That's difficult. Uh, like that I've ever seen or we've ever... No, uh, just like, like this past month or this past week, like you saw that and you're like, I have to print this. This is awesome. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I only print stuff for my daughter. Uh, so I don't really, I, I haven't printed things for myself in a long time. You know, she's eight and she's, 3D printing is was has been a thing since she was born, right? And she's always like, hey, can you print me that? Can you print me this? And so then we'll go surf Thingiverse and it's like, all right, we go down the, that rabbit hole. So, no, I, for the past uh, month, most of what she has requested were like the poop emoji things. So somebody modeled 
the, the poop emoji. And I've been printing an uncomfortable amount of those of various sizes and mostly with our uh, recycled pet G because she loves those colors so much and she likes to shine light through them. And uh, it's, it is cool. So, and there's no support material needed. So bonus. I don't say my favorite, but it makes her happy. So I guess it makes me happy too. Easy that points, sounds, right? Easy dad points. That sounds like my daughter. She keeps stealing my broken ones out of my bin and goes, it's my misfits. <laughs> and she has a display of misfit toys that are, you know, kind of broken. And she goes, Santa will come get them eventually for me. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I scored major points when I did uh, a, uh, a larger poop emoji and I switched, I swapped, I paused and swapped colors, you know, of our various, kind of got a rainbow poop um, with our RPG. That was pretty epic. Yeah. With, with the colors, do you, do you ever foresee doing some custom colors for the Toys for Tots programs? I mean, gray toys and a lot of yellow toys, you know, the colors kind of, you get overwhelmed with a lot of the same color. I was just curious if you guys have thought about doing you know, limited runs for, for the elves. Um, yeah, that'd be interesting. I think the only the only thing difficult for us is if um, if we when we do a custom color, it's 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 a lot less waste to do a lot of it. So I won't. I don't. I don't know if we'll run into the same issue. You know, of having like a mono color if we do if we if we choose a custom color. But yeah, we can uh, maybe play with like poles and stuff like that to see. Doing the yeah. custom color would be cool, especially if it was like ICD-3's colors and you did it in the spool and it ch color mm -hmm. changed and we printed the toys in those, that would be awesome. Hmm. I will yeah, say that Recycled PETG has been the first recycled filament I've used that has actually been enjoyable to use. <laughs> yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm a fan, again, having printed quite a bit in that on a personal um, a personal basis. I hadn't printed uh, up until like two, two, two months ago. I I didn't print at home for many, many years because everything was just at, at the shop um, until I took an old uh, Taz Mini that we weren't using sitting in a corner just to because my because my daughter was asking more and more about um, printing stuff for her, right? And and so finally, I was like, okay, let's let's do this. I'm, I'm going to take advantage of her her curiosity, right? As a as a parent, like, sweet. She's it's it's cute because she says she always says you have the coolest work thing, and that which always makes me makes me smile. Can't can't complain about that. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. If anybody has uh, just one more question, and then we'll wrap it up. I'll ask a question to the elves, if that's okay. Just real quick around the room, what's been your favorite thing in the Toys for Tots campaign this year? Napping on wheels. That's kind of a joke, though. <laughs> Sounds both satisfying and infuriating. Thumbs may never love... recover. <laughs> I would say in the past, you know, the octopus has always been a, a favorite toy of mine, but um, the trains really stood out this year for us. I was going to say the train's really cool, and I love the Triceratops this year, that new, more three-dimensional one. That was cool. I tried to print as many trains as I could, and the most, the, the most satisfying moment for me was... Uh, fitting 60 wheels onto a build plate and then just there's a really good asmr video of just crack 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 <laughs> yeah that's awesome. i'll have to post that on the discord where you slowly like bend it too oh yeah it's just like uh i finally solved my bed adhesion issues um and it just like worked wonderfully I, yeah i got 60 on a bed at once it's great nice yeah, that snapping noise when you get a, go to break it off those flex plates, man, that noise is so nice. <laughs> okay, and with that, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Thank you so much for all the printing that you guys have done through the years. 
Thank you so much for stepping up and taking some of the work off of uh, our hands so that we can make this campaign even bigger this year. Um, thank you to our president and founder, Michael Cow, uh, everybody else that's helping. Uh, and we will hope to hear from you uh, probably coming next July, right? And we can uh, start this all over again, see what we can make of it. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, everyone. And uh, I'm excited to do more of these. Um, we get to know you all better. See you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.